back with Sheriff David Clark, who is facing a $13 million cut to your budget. 20% of the staff you say that you will have to lay off, and it's impossible for you to put the deputies on the buses, correct? You know, I'm not even budgeted for uh, security on the buses. The county took that away from the sheriff's office before I got there. I think they pay back a million in dollars for security? And, and gave it to Wackenhut. But I'm providing the service that I can anyway without being budgeted because they need help. What, okay, what the service passengers, is that? Well, we have a bus initiative that's been going on for about five years now. Okay, but I haven't been running around patting myself on the back talking about how, you know, the great job we're doing. We just quietly go about doing, my men and women, quietly go about doing their job. We have a bus initiative in place, but the reality is starting January 1st, I'm going to have 50 less sheriff's deputies. That's 20% of my staff. I only have about 370, whereas Ed's got 1,800. Mm -hmm. That's significant. So those little things that we're doing right now that I'm not even budgeted for, lakefront uh, initiative, parks. L let me ask the, you. Well, well let, me, let me finish this though. And buses. Where am I going to get people the reality that I can't do all these things effectively? Okay, I'm about effectiveness. I didn't say we couldn't do it. We're not going to be as effective. And I want to fix it. I don't want to just put a Band-Aid on it. So let me ask you this. In a statement, you said that you can't just uh, react to a spike in particular crime and move uh, officer crime. As a layperson, as a citizen who might be in the midst of a crime, why not? Because you want a staying presence. Because what happens is, once you leave, the bad guys return. But if, but you know, if hell is breaking loose over here, as you need to be here, or was you were assigned there, I don't. I mean, I don't get it. Okay, if you have the proper amount of resources, you're not going to have all these little fires popping up. The being the district police stations are being decimated off from this here, from this neighborhood over here to go over here, and you have to take care of emerging problems. But then, who fills the void left from the neighborhood you took these police officers from? That's when the problems start to manifest themselves over there and then you're taking these and then you're running back over here it's called tail chasing I believe in a so you have resources that you keep there all the time these problems from emerging in the first place it's preventive policing and not reacting to a problem that's emerging and let the districts have those people those neighborhoods have those officers so they can uh, get the police there when they need them so that they'll be more willing to report these sorts of things on an ongoing basis. I'm on a complaint right now from a lady in the city of Milwaukee, and I a lot. These aren't the kind of things that I go out and start whacking Ed Flynn about, though. This lady, she lives on Maple Street. I got the email sitting on my desk, and she says, I got a, people selling drugs in the, uh, uh, she lives in a duplex. The resident's upstairs. She says, that guy's been arrested for drugs. He's selling drugs again. I can't get the Milwaukee Police Department to take an interest in this. Sheriff, can you do something? I get that a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, okay, Sheriff. that's an example of how, you know, okay, it's, it, seemed, it sounds neat to, well, we'll take care of everything, but then you take care of nothing because who's going to respond to this lady's drug complaint? I'm going to help her, and I do that when city uh, residents in the city of Milwaukee reach out to me. I do what I can. I don't just, well, it's not my responsibility. But there comes a point in time where there's diminishing returns because you just don't have the resources. So you're hearing from residents, and I, you know, I understand that. And I know you've said it's not personal. And in the end, you're both looking for the same result to keep the city safe. Can you blame people at home right now, though, thinking that this is personal? It sounds personal. You know, call it what you want to call it. Okay. Uh, you know, we're, we have two different mindsets as to how to get to the same thing. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I support quality of life policing. All right? And we are data driven. But if I see a 10% drop in something somewhere, whether it be, you know, on the freeway or in the parks, I don't think everything's okay. I say, you know what, this might be working, we don't know, but we have to stay here because 10% isn't enough. I want like 40, 50, 60, I want significant drops in crime, not 10, 15, you know, some people might say that's good enough. It ain't good enough for me. So it's just two, two different ways of getting to the same thing. Are you concerned at all with your image? Because, you know, this budget issue, the battle that you've had with this, and now the bus issue, has put you in a position where you've had to make your case. You know, if, you, if I'm sure that's the way you would put it. Others have seen it as you being a complainer. Are you concerned that the general public, who are going to have to vote for you in the future, are now starting like to see you more as someone who is complaining more than reacting. Well, like I said, I'm a different kind of cat. I don't care about that. 
But you need to. You're this a politician. A, you need to get reelected. I don't care about this. It's not why I'm here. I'm here to make a difference. Okay. And if the people of Milwaukee County, collectively, not a couple of politicians, if they decide they want to change in the office of the sheriff, they'll do it. This isn't about me. So my image? No, this is about the safety of the people of Milwaukee County. And you know what? Once I start to worry about that, my image and what this is doing to me, then I'm no longer serving the people of this county. Somebody's got to fight for them, and I'm willing to do that. Are you willing to do it at a different office? Because many people are whispering about you running against Abley. Well, that's kind of interesting uh, that you ask, and I don't want to get too deep into that, because that's not what this is about. You don't want to announce here in Real Milwaukee? <laughs> Come, Come on, Come on, on. Sarah. <laughs> Are you going to run for Milwaukee County Executive? I don't want to, to take the focus off of what we, we really should be talking about here, but... You know, if people are talking about, and, and, and I am getting encouraged to do a number of things, well, then this thing you just mentioned about my image and isn't going to hurt, apparently it's not hurting. I'm going to continue to fight for people in this county. And if people of, collectively, not a few loud mouths here and there, get tired of my act and what I'm doing, they'll make a change, and I'll have to accept that. Mm -hmm. When the police chief said that he was going to put his officers on the bus, you guys uh, at least came out with a statement saying that you were happy about that. Darn yeah. right. I'll take help from anywhere. I don't, I, I'm not into turf protection here. Anybody that wants to help in this situation, that's fine with me. And I, I so encourage why did it. Make I would, you I, angry? I would have to wonder, because he didn't have to take the shots that he did in doing so. But I would wonder, where has he been? This problem isn't new. I've been talking about bus safety for five years. So it's I've been just putting because those. of all of the videos that have come out and the latest we've had a We've had a, a, a streak of them, yeah. like four or five of the things you were showing earlier. Yeah. That's ugly. Yeah. One of those is too many. One every two years is too many. That is unacceptable behavior. And I don't care what the reason is. I know you guys were talking about, well, this mother said this. and That, that is not an appropriate response right. to whatever right. was going on on that bus. And that two-year-old child, that's right. the one that made that. me sick. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Had to be traumatized. Mm -hmm. yeah. During that's this whole thing, that kid right. and someone's going to say, "Well, no, that's you're sensational." I'm not sensationalizing anything. I'm telling people the truth, and that I'll continue to tell them the truth. We can all agree on that. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. We'll end on that. that. We have to go to break. Are you sure you don't want to make an announcement? Nothing. <laughs> right now. Come on, your real Milwaukee family. Throw us a bone. Don't go away. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. We've gotten they'll so be right, far. They'll be right back. I won't be. Hey, get them some sugar. Maybe that'll help. Thank you for being here, Sheriff. We'll be back. Ha <laughs> ha